All right, today I'm gonna to record a quick episode about how to set up checkout with ASP.NET Web Forms, not MVC. Uh, this is, we from time to time, we get a couple questions about how to set up checkout with Web Forms using you know, ASPX with the code behind, and so I kinda of wanna just walk through that. So first I'm gonna open up Visual, Studios, uh, Visual Studio Code here, and uh, I'm gonna create a new project of type uh, ASP.NET Web Forms. So I go to New, and then go down to .NET, click ASP.NET Web Forms, we're using C Sharp today. Next, yes, Web Forms is checked. We don't actually need test unit for today, but you probably want that. Um, I'm gonna put this in Office Hours, and I'm gonna call it Checkout, and the project, actually, yeah, we'll call the project name Checkout and create, okay? Um, so that's gonna create a brand new project here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is install some dependencies. So we can do that by saying manage your NuGet preferences or uh, NuGet packages, and we wanna say stripe.net is the package we wanna install. We click the box there, say add package, and we're adding it to this project. Okay, so this is the default page. If we click play, this will fire up a, um, a new, local server that's running just that default page that it, it comes with. Um, and it has a button there that says click me, you clicked me, that's great, but we don't want any of this default functionality. So we're actually gonna remove this run at server. Um, let's see if we can make this a little bigger. We're gonna remove this run at server. And in fact, we're gonna just remove this button completely and replace it with a, a classic HTML button that has type equal to submit. And uh, in here we'll just say like, check out okay uh, oh man let's why <laughs> okay visual studios doesn't want to play nice with me why is it doing both of those that's so frustrating okay I usually edit this in in Vim. All right, so the first thing we want to go is install Stripe.js. So we can, if we go to stripe.com slash docs slash JS, we can see the tag that we need to use to install or include Stripe.js. So we'll copy this tag here and add that at the bottom right before the closing body tag. Uh, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to initialize an instance of the Stripe object. So I'm going to create a new script tag down here. And in here, the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize a new instance of Stripe, passing in my publishable key, okay? And then what we wanna say is when this form is submitted, we want to redirect to checkout. So first we grab reference to the form by ID. So we say var form is equal to document.getElement by ID. And we pass in form one, because that's the ID of the form that matches this ID here. The next thing we wanna do is add a submit uh, event listener. So we wanna say form dot add event listener submit. So when the form is submitted, call this function that will be passed an argument called E. And we want to say e.prevent default because we don't want this to make a full page redirect. Okay, and then inside here we'll say stripe.redirect to checkout and we'll pass in this options object that will receive the session ID. Okay, this session ID we're gonna pass in from the server. So we're gonna create a checkout session on page load inside of our page load function. Um, and then we're gonna pass that here. So session ID, I'll call it. And I'm just gonna save this. So when the page loads, we're going to create a new instance of Stripe. We are going to grab reference to the form element by ID. We're gonna add an event listener and we're gonna redirect to checkout. Great. So now what we wanna do is go to our code behind. So default ASPX.CS and open that up. We don't care about this button clicked event, but instead we want to listen for page. Actually, let's see. I don't actually know what the page load is. So we're gonna delete this. We're gonna just delete this whole thing. It's a public string session ID is equal to just the empty string for now. And then on load, we're going to set the session ID to the checkout session. Um,
Okay, so we wanna add the page load function here. And in here, we want to create the checkout session and uh, set uh, session ID, this variable, this publicly available uh, string variable to be the, the value of the ID returned from the session. Um, so what I'm gonna do is head over to the Stripe documentation and um, go to docs API checkout sessions create to look at the API reference for creating a checkout session. And so I'm actually gonna just copy all of the code here for creating checkout sessions under the .NET language. So I'm just gonna copy all of this and paste it in here. And I wish this would auto format. Quick fix, nope. Um, yeah, so let's see. We wanna use Stripe. We want to um, use Stripe Checkout, and we want to use Collections Generic, and we should be good. Okay, is this going to behave? Okay, the style here is a little off, but that's okay. So we're creating a new, uh, so let's see, our success URL is coming back here. It's actually going to be something like localhost, uh, what was it again, 8080, and success, and we'll say like, uh, the ID is checkout session ID. Um, and the same thing here, we wanna replace the domain with our local host. When you go to production, you'll wanna update this with your real production um, domains and, and such. Okay, then we have a line items arg argument. Oh, well, we're passing the payment method types. This is the payment methods we, we're gonna accept. Card, you could also pass ideal a few other options there if you'd wanted. Um, and then we want to pass some line items. This is where you can define the amount that you want to uh, charge for each line item. Um, yeah, so keeping, keeping it super simple. Then we're creating a new instance of a checkout session service and creating, calling service.create, which is gonna create a new session. So this session variable here has all the data about the session. And what we want to do is store the ID of that session in the session ID string that we're gonna render. So session ID equals session dot ID. Okay, so now if we save that and we save this, hopefully this session ID is rendered into this variable. So we'll, we'll stop and restart since we edited the code behind and we get a new page here. I'm gonna open up the Chrome debugger by saying right click inspect, not that one, right click inspect or um, command option I, go to our script tag here, and we do see the session is rendered directly into the session ID section here. Um, so if we go to the sources tab, we can uh, click on a number line in the gutter to add a breakpoint. We click on the checkout button, um, and oops, our breakpoint didn't work, but we redirected to checkout uh, as expected. So here we are, we can enter in um, our test card details here. Uh, and click pay and we will finish payment and then redirect back to our localhost 8080 um, slash success and you'll see that in the URL we have that checkout session ID so if we wanted to we can retrieve the session by ID and display some status um, so that's how you can sort of redirect to checkout uh, really basic um, yeah, we can probably, uh, yeah, I mean, you can go through and add more logic to handle this success page by grabbing the reference to the ID here and then pulling up the checkout session um, directly. So hopefully that's helpful.